really, really happy to be with um, both of the guys, uh, Seb and Jesse from Death From Above. Um, I, I've, been, I've, I've been a fan of your guys for a long, long time. Um, and I, the first time I saw you live, unfortunately, I didn't get to see you guys when you were playing Smaller Rooms. The first time I got to see you guys live was when you were opening up for Queens of the Stone Age at uh, the Bell Center. <laughs> the opposite of a small room exactly <laughs> but i'll tell you man uh i was really really impressed um th there's something really really cool about this band and um I, I, the last time i saw you live was at oceaga when all these herds of people were going to catch the weekend mm. and, and i was like there's not a chance that i'm leaving and that show not only was it an amazing show but the volume of at that show was crazy um, well, we had to we had to compete with the weekend, a professional touring operation. You know, uh, I think you guys you, you guys are a professional touring operation. But, uh, but I remember, um, I think it was with either my son or my brother, and we were watching the show, and I couldn't believe how loud it was for two people on stage. Uh, first of all, whoever was mixing you that day, I don't know if, they, if they, I don't know if it was so, it was something that was intentional, but um, the sound that comes off you guys when you play live is just is like like no other. Um, well, the less the less sounds are competing, the louder the sounds you have can be. Right, right. You know? So right. that's our we have that to our advantage. And I also think that you know there's there's something to be said about exactly what you're saying. Things that don't compete. Sometimes when you have less, it's it really is more. And and that's really evident with your band. It's amazing mm -hmm. the sounds that you guys can get with the, you know the the, the 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 you would some would say limited. Um, keep you know limited sonic scapes, but you guys managed to fill that space. Uh, when did that sound first come about, and how did it come about? Did you guys ever have other people in the band, or did no. it always start? Okay, it, it was uh, the the new the, the beginning of the band was the inception was a um, we'd been planning to go on tour with our seven piece hardcore band, uh, and nine eleven happened, the literal event of nine okay. eleven. Okay. And all of our gear was in the living room, ready to be packed away to go to Detroit the next day. Okay. And the borders closed. And so uh, on 9-11 with very, uh, you know, maybe a, 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 a opaque and grim vision of the present and the future, uh, Jesse plugged in all the amps in the living room and picked up a bass that didn't even belong to him. He didn't own a bass and made this tremendous sound um, by plugging all these amps together. That's okay. still the sound we have today. Right. It's the sound of that day um, and the feeling of that day, which is, uh, I don't know, apocalypse, yeah. <laughs> Armageddon, whatever, whatever the feeling was. Um, we're all old enough to remember how that felt. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so every part of the band is like that. It, it has some kind of, heavy meaning um if not only for us um but i think that that's part of the part of the the secret sauce of the band is that we we imbue everything with so much meaning um that uh people can then hang their meanings on top of it right. whether it's just a abstract thing or they're interpreting a lyric or they're getting some kind of visceral reaction from the music and sometimes just from the volume and that's part of the part of the approach live is that you want to be bathed in an experience yeah you can just put headphones on and listen to a record and you can turn it down right. and listen to all the nuance in it um but there's nothing quite like being in a sound bath yeah right well, that, and, and that truly was what happened to me that day at Oceaga. Yeah. it felt like mm -hmm. i was just being washed over with this like wall of sonic um i listened to the new record this morning uh Again, like what you said, makes a lot of sense. And now that's pro probably why I can have a better understanding now of the sound coming from you, you describing it that way. Because there's some stuff that's extremely industrial. It's extremely like aggressive, ugly, but then there's these beautiful harmonies, uh, not harmonies, I should say, there's these beautiful hooks that are in there mm -hmm. um, and, and melodies that are, are it's, all, it's almost like they're disjointed, but it makes so much sense. So I think that's a big part of what the DFA for me, you know, Death mm -hmm. From Above is like, it's just these contrasts. Yeah, I mean, I, I said it the other day, but, you know, Guns and Roses is not called Roses and Petals. It's yeah. called Guns and Gun. Roses. It's yeah. about the dichotomy. Right. And so the juxtaposition of um, whatever the, the sweetness that I bring to the band and the 
and the chaos that Jesse brings to the band. Um, that's always been the case, you right. know? Uh, and it's, it's an unnatural pairing in certain regards. It shouldn't go together, but I don't know, we've made it work. Uh, also the, because of the limited instrumentation, and I'll, I'll use that word limited, it's really just like minimum required instrumentation to get the ideas across. There's like, uh, an, I think an element to our music that is like being filled in by your own brain mm -hmm. yeah. as well. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, it's I, like, do. I do. It's a bit of an impressionist painting, not so much a photograph. Uh, there's moments that are just a feeling that then, it, there's other, other bands that do that or have moments of that and I'm drawn to those things. Elsewhere. You know, I, like, I had a, interesting experience with that exact thing you're speaking of in Montreal when we played uh what's the big club is it Metropolis that's near Fufun on St. Yeah Catherine? yeah well now so it's we... called the it's called the M Telus now but Metropolis oh yeah yeah well, I'll, call it, I'll call it Metropolis <laughs> so a lot forever forever, forever um we played Metropolis and um and we went to Fufun after for beers with a friend of mine um who lives in Montreal this uh she's a, a, a contemporary dancer named Helen Sima and uh I was disappointed in my performance. I thought I didn't sing well. I thought I didn't play well. I screwed up a lot. You know, I had a really like bad after show feeling and her and her husband were so excited for the show. They, they love coming to the shows and they were like stoked, you know, and, and here I'm like, I didn't do a good job. And then she said, uh, you know, most people don't won't notice that. And most people come to the show and they're bringing their experience to the show so they're yeah. not you have to be a, a, you know a, a, you have to be a and it's it's a narcissistic or ego, egotistical impulse to think that i'm what i'm doing is the most important thing in the room it is to a certain extent it's contributing yeah. it's part of the recipe but right. everyone else is contributing this other thing that they're hanging on it the, the day they had um what they're coming to express or to exercise from their from their week or their hard lives they're coming there to have an experience and you're just a part of that experience. You're not the right. whole thing. Right. And so our band is, is somewhat like that where um, it's a framework and then you can interpret it in, 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 in any way you want to really. Well, and I think it's perception too, right? Like you, mm -hmm. you perceive something cause you're putting out something but everyone else around you might perceive it completely different. And, and there's sure. so many variables that go into that, you know, whatever your headspace is that day, whatever their headspace is, the room you're playing in, uh, if something's out of tune. So there's so many, so many things that can happen, but mm -hmm. I'll tell you the first time I saw you in an arena, I was blown away, which, <laughs> you know, to see two people fill up that space. So you guys are great filler uppers of space. <laughs> uh, just quickly, cause I know we only have a couple of minutes. Um, I just want to ask you, tell me a bit about creating this record, um, how it came together. And, uh, and are you excited to play these songs live finally when you can? Go ahead, Jesse. God, when we can, that's mm -hmm. a, it's a, a, it's a interesting thing to have that not be up to us or the fans, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, we made this record in one room together. Uh, we, Sebastian mixed the record and engineered the record. I mastered the record sitting right where I'm sitting right now. Uh, and, a lot of what you hear on the record is the first take pretty much of those things or perhaps the only take of those moments you know uh and so it sounds very it sounds very immediate it doesn't sound over overdone because you know sebastian took on a big responsibility in mixing the whole album and he didn't have time to to spend trying to make everything perfect and also what's perfect you know like yeah. uh we've made the last two records we made were with somebody else kind of reminding us to be death from above or <laughs> scolding us a little bit when we were doing things that uh they didn't think we should do or that were uh quote unquote wrong and this time there was nobody there but us so there was no one to tell us not that something needed to be fixed if it wasn't one of us. And so we didn't fix anything. And <laughs> it is just uh, the most um, immediate way of record, like we were writing and recording it at, at the same time. You know, it's not like the typical 
write some songs and then demo them and then do pre-production. And then, you know, like there's all these stages you can go through, but we just did it all in pretty much one step. Well, so it's, it's, it sounds like that to me. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's, it's one step that it was like 10,000 micro yeah. things. <laughs> but normally the, you yeah. know, like the standard way of, of the people end up making records to, you know, how many writers are there on those weekend songs? Yeah, there. You know, it was uh, some some of the writers are Michael Jackson, but by the way, yeah. But, uh, how, how many how many people are involved? Yeah. In, whereas it's this record from beginning to end is you're talking to it. Yeah. You know? Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll stick with you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Th thanks for taking the time to tell me that's all we got. So uh, I appreciate it. Can't wait to see you guys again live. And I, I really really like the record. So continued success and stay healthy, guys. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you.